So this morning I want to discuss the origins of Easter, the pagan origins of Easter, and before I get to that, I just want to point out right here concerning Xmas, Christmas, whatever you want to call it, it is well known that these Christian holidays, as they say, have no origin with Yehoshua, the real Savior of Israel. For example, in historycooperative.org, in fact, 25th of December was not even, as they say, Jesus' birthday. They don't even realize that Jesus is not even the name of the real Messiah. Okay? The early Christians appropriated what was originally a pagan holiday because it was convenient. Which brings me to the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, where in... I want to... Uh, also show you something that you Christians totally twist the words of Paul as Cephas, not Peter, said that you would. Verse 1, Brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant of how all of our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. Well, wait a minute, he was talking to Corinthians. The Corinthians were Gentiles. Yes, but if they're converted, they become jointly of the same tree of Israel. Not replacing Israel as Christianity decided that they wanted to do. You see, they would be grafted in among the branches of Israel as Ruth as Rahab were grafted in among the branches of Israel <coughs> and were baptized unto Moshe in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same for lack of a better word uh, spiritual meat and did all drink of the same spiritual drink for they drank of that now spiritual rock See, the words that came out of Moshe's mouth. Okay? And followed him, and the rock, was it Christ? Well, we all know that Paul did not use the word Christ. He were to use Moshiach. But it is not was. It is was in agreement. In other words, of the same Likening. It was like the Moshiach. So that rock that brought forth water to save the people of Israel from dying of thirst was like, was comparable. Not actually was the same thing. Is agreement to have charge hold ad ad agreed with. The word is agreed. All right? Agree. You see it? But with many of them, not Gaut, or Gautaz, or Odin, or Deus, or Deuspiter, or Jupiter, or Zeus. Jehovah was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be you idolaters. What's an idolater? <coughs> Some of them, it is written that people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit 
fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Yehoshua HaMoshiach, not Christ, because Christ is a term for a pagan idol, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Neither murmur, as some of them also murmur and were destroyed by a destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples and are written for our admoni admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Now, that is a very good statement. Those of you who call yourselves born-again Christians, once saved, always saved, that statement applies to you, especially in the context of idolatry, as he's quoting here today. Okay? So, what do you mean, Henry? I'm going to spell it out for you today, folks. You're not saved if you commit idolatry. Doesn't matter how many times you say it. Doesn't matter how many times you've been dunked in water. You are not saved if you commit, commit idolatry. And if you commit idolatry, you are a sinner. And if you're born again, you cannot sin. So there you're not born again either. Therefore has no temptation taken but such as common to man. But Jehovah is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. The hour of temptation that is coming to try all of those that dwell upon the earth, as in Roman, uh, as in Revelation 3, there is a way out. But you Christians, you're so boneheaded and rejected the truth, you will not go that route. You will call those who go to that route. You will actually dub them being deceived by the devil. This is what you do because this is what you already say. You call Israel's Moshiach the Antichrist. And you claim that the Antichrist is going to deceive Israel into going back to the Holy Land from all the four corners of the four, the four quarters of the earth. Now here's what he says here. Now, for this reason, that's what wherefore means in case you didn't know it. Wherefore means for this reason, my dearly beloved. Flee from idolatry. But what did Christians do? They embraced it. I'll continue. You're wise men. You know what I'm talking about. The cup of blessing in which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of the Moshiach, not Christ? The bread in which we bre break, is it not the communion of the body of the Moshiach? For, for we being... Many are one bread and one body. We are all partakers of that one bread. Look at Israel. After the flesh, don't they eat other sacrifices, partakers of the altar? What am I saying? That the idol is anything of value? Or that which is offered in sacrifices to idol is anything of value? No! What I'm saying is, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice unto demons. 
and not to Jehovah. So if you deviate from the teachings of Paul, as he pointed out to you Gentiles, because he was in fact the apostle to the Gentiles, if you deviate from his teachings and you go back to the things what you came from, then you worship devils and not Jehovah. No, his name is not God. His name is not Deus. His name is not Godin. His name is not Got, Gotaz. Deus, Deus, Peter. And I would not have you that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of Jehovah and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of Jehovah's table and the table of devils. Are we going to provoke Jehovah to jealousy? Do we think we are stronger than he is? Apparently you do. Apparently you do. And I'm going to show you today that you are indeed committing this idolatry and what will happen to you because you do this. That's right. I'm going to show it to you today. Now, here we have Easter coming up. Tomorrow, I guess it is. That's when you Christians celebrate your Easter. I have never done it myself, so, you know, it's nothing to me. Easter is linked to the pagan springtime goddess Eoster, according to Han, celebrated during the spring equinox, e Eoster was uh, first documented in the 8th century and is associated with some Easter traditions that have lasted to this day. This is from Fox Weather. Ah, uh, Fox Weather. See that? Now, Paul said you cannot drink of the cup of the Messiah and the cup of devils. But you Christians, you say, oh yes, we can. Because even your own news channels say, prove that it is of pagan origins. You see? What we know is that Easter has a lot of pagan origins, so it comes from a lot of traditions that are much earlier than Christianity itself. All right. Now, let's look at the cross symbol that you Christians worship every Sunday, especially tomorrow. Speculation has associated the cross symbol even in the prehistoric period with astronomical or cosmological symbology involving four elements. <clears throat> or the cardinal points or the unity of vertical axis Monday or celestial pole with the horizontal world. Celestial pole like the Asherah poles. Speculation of this kind became especially popular in the mid to 19th century in the context of comparative mythology, seeking to tie Christian mythology to ancient cosmological myths. Influential works in this vein including G. D. De Mar Mortillet. In the European Bronze Age, the cross symbol appeared to carry religious meaning, perhaps as a symbol of consecration, especially pertaining to burial. The cross sign, and you guys call it the sign of the cross, occurs trivially in tally marks and develops into a number symbol. Oh, a symbol of a number, interestingly enough. Independent in the Roman numerals 10, the Chinese rod numerals 10, and the Brahmi numerals 4, numerals four but Brahmi, I guess that would be of uh, Indian origin. 
In the Phoenician alphabet and derived scripts, the cross symbol represented to the phoneme, the letter Ta, which is historically predecessor of the Latin T. The letter name Ta means Mark. Mark. As in Mark of the Beast. That's right. The letter name Tall means Mark. I have shown you this truth many, many, many times. Presumably, look, look, hold on. Let us remind, let me remind you what I showed you in previous videos. Ash Wednesday. All I have to do is pull up Ash Wednesday and pull up images and what do you see? You see a mark. It is a mark according to the letter tall, which is historically a predecessor of Latin T. The letter name tall means mark. Now, the pole in which Yehoshua was nailed to was a staros. That is a mark. That is the mark of the beast is what it is. Now let's have a look at the Egyptian Ankh. That is their mark. Where did it come from? Well, first of all, let us look at all these images of crosses. You see the Egyptian ankh here. I need to get rid of this here. You see the Celtic cross here in honor of the sun. In honor of the sun. These are all pagan folks. Okay. The Egyptian Ankh symbol, often known as the Key of Life or the Cross of Life, Ankh was one of the ancient Egypt's most iconic symbols dating from the early dynastic period. Yes, even before Israel was taken out of Egypt that long ago. And you all know that the Egyptians were heavy into idolatry. Idolatry is the religion of Israel's oppressors. All right? Now, how did they turn it into a Christian ank? Well, an ank is an ank. And we read here, don't forget but I say the things that the Gentiles sacrifice a sacrifice to devils and not to Jehovah
The Ankh's connection to the afterlife made it a particularly powerful emblem for Egypt's Coptic Christians. Coptic Ankh as their own in the 4th century. The Christians, the Egyptian Christians use, uh, well, all the Christians use the cross as a sign of faith today, is most likely derived from this use of the Ankh as a symbol of Christ's promise of so what you see here is a mixture religion but Paul said you can't do that let me show you what happens when you do do that I will give you the first example in Judges And the children of Israel, this is Judges 10 and verse 6, did evil in the sight of not the Lord. As you can see right here, the name is Jehovah, since he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His name then shall always be Jehovah. And served Balaam and Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth is Easter. And the idols of Syria, the idols of Zidon, and the idols of Moab, and the idols of the children of Ammon, and the idols of the Philistines that they call Palestinians today, and forsook Jehovah. So when you go and serve these idols and their symbols and their mark, you forsake Jehovah. That's what you do. And served him not. Or it could say, and served him as well. In fact, it is proven that the people of Israel, and this is what made Jehovah angry with them, they left it, they went from the temple of Jehovah and then served idols in the same day. I will find, one day I will find scriptures that show that in the prophets. And the anger of Jehovah was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines, or Pelishti, as it says right here, which today they call Palestinians, and into the hands of Ammon, which is in Jordan today. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel 18 years at that year. Beginning with that year, they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel 18 years, and all the children of Israel were on the other side of the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight against Yehuda and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed, and the children of Israel cried unto Jehovah, saying, We have sinned against you because we have forsaken Elohim, and served Balaam. Now I want to point something out to you. I want you to remember this statement because Yehoshua accused the churches of serving Balaam. Believe it or not. I will get there in a moment. And Jehovah said unto the children of Israel, didn't I deliver you from the Egyptians, from the Amorites, from the Ammonite, Ammonites, and from the Philistines, the Sidonians, the Amalekites, the Maonites, did oppress you, and you cried out unto me, and I delivered out of your hand, yet you have forsaken me and served these false idols, therefore will I deliver you no more. Go and cry unto those idols which you have chosen, and let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. That's right, folks. Now remember, folks. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. And in this case, he was talking about money, but it applies wherever it applies to. Now we go to Revelation 2, 
Remember what it says right here. Go and cry unto the idols which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Revelation 2. And to the messenger to the ecclesia in Pergamos, or Pergamum, these things says he has the sharp sword with two edges. I know your works and where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. And I just showed you in a previous video where Antipas was killed was the altar of Zeus. And Zeus is Satan. The name Jesus is in honor of Satan. And you hold fast my name. So these people, they did not reject the name Yehoshua for Jesus. Or Zeus. And have not denied my faith even in those days where Antipas was my faithful servant who was slain among you were... Zeus dwelled. But I have a few things against you because you have them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Here we go again. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel and to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. So you also have them to hold the doctrine of Nicholas can be construed with jolly old, as they say, St. Nicholas. Which thing I hate, repent, or I will come against you quickly and will fight against them with the sword out of my mouth. I did a video about that. How, he's, how Yehoshua is going to come and fight against the ten kings with a sword that proceeds out of his mouth. Now, there's more. And to the messenger of the church in Thyatira write these things, says the son of Elohim, whose eyes are like the flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, your charity service, and your faith and patience and your works. The last to be greater than the first, notwithstanding I have a few things against you because you have allowed that woman Jezebel who called herself a prophetess to teach and cause my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her time and I will tell you the amount of time that he gave her to repent was at the Council of Nicaea until now. In fact, before the Council of Nicaea, because I showed you passages where Paul warned the Corinthians, the Galatians, the Romans that they were turning against the truth while he was still alive to repent of her fornication and she refused and those of you who will go to your Sunday Easter service and you have all of your Easter stuff out there in your home scattered about having your children play with the abominations of the Gentiles, that's you. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and those who commit adultery with her into the great tribulation. Israel had to suffer tribulation when they committed idolatry, and you are no different. Except they repent of their deeds, and I will kill her children, her the generations after, with pestilence, than Thanos, pestilence, a fatal pestilence. Now I will show you what that fa fatal plague, pestilence blow is.
in just a, in just a minute. And all the ecclesia shall know that I am he who searches out the hearts and reigns. You can't hide your idolatry from Yehoshua, you Christians. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works, but unto you I say unto the rest in Thyatira, as many has not had this doctrine and have not known the depths of Satan. So who, again, was the synagogue of Satan? Those who delved into the depths of Satan. There were those among the churches back in those days, and it has blossomed into a horrific thistle tree of paganism today. Horrific thorn tree, I should say. Now, great tribulation. Revelation 9 and verse 13. And the sixth messenger sounded, and I heard a voice from the four messengers out of the golden altar, which is before Jehovah. Remember, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, his name is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his name is Jehovah, as I have proved to you today, and each and every time that I do these videos. Saying to the sixth messenger, which had the trump, the shofar, lose the four messengers which are bound, which are tied, which are binded in the great river Euphrates, and the four messengers were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day, and a month and a year, for to slay a third of men. With what? When you see what is written in Zechariah 14, and then you read this, you will understand what it is. Let's go to Zechariah 14. Oh, wait a minute. Bible Hub? Actually, I was there. Watch this. Verse 12 is the same one. And this shall be the plague wherewith not the Lord, but Jehovah, as you can plainly see, will smite all the people that have ever fought against Jerusalem. Who are the people who fought against Jerusalem? The Romans. The Turks. The Russians are Romans too. I proved that to you in the previous video. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. We saw that example in Japan, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. In that day, a great tumult from Jehovah shall be among them, and they shall hold, lay hold every man one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall be against the hand of his neighbor. And that is why Yehuda is fighting at Jerusalem. So let's go back to the sixth trumpet sound, and let's see what it says here. The number of the army of the horsemen were two, ten thousand. 10,000. What does that mean in English? It does not mean 200,000. It literally says to 10,000, 10,000. Not to times 10,000, 10,000. That's not what it says. It says to 10,000, 10,000. And I heard the number of them. And I saw the horse in the vision. Not in them. It doesn't say them. them. It says, I saw the horse in the vision. And sitting on those horses. 
had breastplates of fire of jacinth and brimstone. The heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Well, horses have narrow heads. Lions have wide heads. What did he see? And out of the mouth came fire, smoke, and brimstone. So let me show you what I think he saw. All right, let's have a look, shall we? So, head like a lion, wide, okay? On the breastplate of that which sat on the horse was the color of fire. There it is, red, right there, that red star. Jacinth and brimstone. The color of jacinth is either orange and black or yellow and black, but in this case, it would be brimstone and black because it says brimstone. And what is the color of brimstone? Yellow. That which sat on the horse. Check. There's your colors. Wide head. There's the mouse. That which sits in the mouth, what comes out of the mouth is fire and brimstone. Now look, let's continue. Fire, smoke, and brimstone. And by these three was a third part of men killed. If that's not a great tribulation, then I don't know what is, folks. by fire and by smoke and by the brimstone which came out of their mouth. For the power is in their mouth, that's right, and in their tail. What does that mean? And their tails were like unto serpents' tails. And the tails had heads. Now, I can make this make sense very easily. Now, Ours, I C B M set upright. Let's see if I can. All right. So this is the rocket launching from the ICBM launcher. All right. You see a version of one here, but this is not a moving one. All right. But I think you get the idea. I just wanted to show you. I suppose I could scroll down and probably find something. Uh, let's see. Let's just go back to, and I might be just working too hard trying to find an upright picture. Okay. This is probably the best I'm going to be able to get right here. All right. See that? That's what's inside of this. So this becomes a tail. And inside the tail is this. And inside here, this missile has multiple heads. All right? Exact warheads. Exactly as written here. For their tails were like unto serpents, and they had heads in the tails. And this is how they do the great damage. 
and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, why did this plague occur? Repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold, of silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which can neither see, nor hear, nor walk, neither did they repent of their murders, nor their sorceries, I think that, what is his name? I can't remember what the guy's name is anymore. The retired head of the NIH, the grand sorcerer. Nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. Folks, what I'm saying is, it's coming to you, the people who go and celebrate Easter tomorrow. It's coming to you. This is for you. Because you did this. Because you committed idolatry. Honoring and worshiping demons. You replaced everything righteous. You replaced it all with the celebrating and worshiping of demons. You want to have nothing to do with the name Jehovah. And you want to have nothing to do with the name Yehoshua. Instead, you named your fake Messiah after Zeus, calling him Hey Zeus. So, this is the reason why this great tribulation is coming upon you. A third part, a third part of mankind is going to be killed for that reason because you are in Sunday church tomorrow morning celebrating a demon.